Welcome back to the channel, guys. We have another episode of Buy or Pass here on the channel. For those that are new to the series, it's a series that I put together. It's more of a pre-release review, an impressions video to guide you down whether or not you want to pre-order or buy the game early on its release. Before you've actually seen the game and can make an informed decision, I'm going to do my best to guide you down this. Now, the information gathered in this video is going to be across approximately 12 minutes of research and my experiences through the scale test and the betas, all 322 of them. And I should hopefully be able to help you identify some of the problems with this game. And a couple of them are actually quite major. I do have quite a few reservations about the game, some really good things about the game. And I'm going to cover all of that through this video. Before we go further, though, I am doing a Sea of Thieves controller giveaway. It's probably roughly retailing around 100 bucks. Really nice thing, whether or not you have an Xbox or PC. If you're a PS4 player, don't even have a console. Sell it for drugs. I don't care. If you want to enter, it's free. Check it out in the description below. It's just a thank you for me. For those that have been supporting my Twitch and everything like that, so go out there and enter. There's multiple ways. So, let's begin. Sea of Thieves set sail March 20th on Xbox One and PC, something that I've covered. Now, this game is actually quite a lot of fun. This is one of those games that you can get together with your friends, and it really amplifies a friendship experience, much like how like Gary's Mod and some of those do. Yeah, you can play those and do stuff, but when you get friends together, it really does blow up the experience, and this is one of those few games that really amplifies the whole friendship thing. Now, I'm going to start with the two things that I consider to be really big problems with this game. Number one, solo play. Now, you can technically queue up and play with random people. This is something that you can do and um, open mic, you can talk, discuss. There's a lot of banter, a lot of toxicity across other pirates, but, you know, it's that pirate life, whatever. The one thing that really upset me is there's a lot of griefing, and it's very, very, very difficult to find teams willing to stay with you. I noticed that when I was matchmaking with people, that I would join their crew, just be randomly thrown on their boat. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm new here. And I would be like, hey, can we do this? And like, no, we're doing this. Hey, did you see that giant skull in the sky? I feel like there's some fat loot over there. They're like, no, I don't want to do this. Hey, can we fight that galleon over there? No, don't want to do that. So I feel like there's a lot of tug and pull with the crew. People are going to want to do different things, and it's very hard to find a large crew to kind of organize and agree on things. This is something that I feel like complicates things. More so, there's a lot of griefing and trolling that can be done in this game, and I don't feel like there's many things they can do to prevent this from happening. An example I will give you. I queued up on a four-man galleon. It's a four-man ship. It's a crew that requires a lot of upkeep and maintenance for it. As a reminder, it's a four-man ship. I didn't get one, but two trolls on this one lobby. That's almost half right there, guys. And they found numerous ways to trigger us. So I got off the wheel, right? I, I wanted to go take care of the sails so we can start getting some wind and get more momentum and movement. And one of the guys jumps on and tries to steer us right into a mountain. Basically completely ruined the ship. And at this point, we started to vote him. And you can do this. This is a, a countermeasure, if you will, to trolling and griefing. And you can vote them into the brig. They basically get locked into a little jail in the bottom. Haha, ha, spit on him. It's fun. We thought we were in the clear. No, this other guy just starts randomly dropping the anchor. Every time we get any momentum, and it just spins the ship about, stops us completely in our tracks, and we can't go anywhere. We're literally stranded out on water. And that is no fun, no bueno. So, you know, eventually he gets bored of that after about five minutes goes by, and he starts drinking rum. Yeah, it's a pirate game. There's rum. You can get drunk. You start actually start sliding all over the place. You can't walk straight. It's very fun to do. And if you drink enough of it, you start vomiting everywhere, including on other people. So then I started to actually steer the ship, and I was not allowed to get off the wheel, because if I did, he tried to take it and run us into a mountain. So I'm stuck here trying to drive this thing while he drinks in front of me and vomits in my face, covering my entire screen. So now I'm driving blind right now, guys. Do you follow me? This is the level of trolling that can happen in the game, and not only do you have to worry about grouping up with people that don't want to do activities that you want to do, or people leaving all the time, and when you're on a four-man ship, what happens? It's hard to get another guy on there, on the crew... The game is just not friendly for somebody wanting to just boot up and play for a few minutes. It's not very easy to do without a bunch of weird things that could really complicate the whole thing. That is something that I found over quite a few hours of playing through these betas. That was an issue, and going forward, this is something I feel like you guys need to understand, that there can be a lot of hiccups just on the solo play. Now, to me, that's a big turnoff for someone that may not have friends that are actually interested in playing this, that it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to find people to actually experience these journeys with. I will be completely honest, though, this is not the biggest problem for me. That is honestly going to lie with Endgame. I do not know where the Endgame is for this game. They haven't actually disclosed this, which makes me kind of nervous. And the game is very simple in quite a few ways. And just to cut that out of the way, 
we go from ranging anything from character customization to actual fighting mechanics. So character customization, there isn't any. They are presets. You don't really get to pick and choose your character. And why this is a thing in what is somewhat of a shared world RPG, I don't understand. But okay, we skip past that. Now, what about weapon progression? There are no weapons to collect. This game is purely a cosmetic collection game. There is no way to obtain power that is going to set you apart from any of the other players or pirates in the game. So I can't level up my blunderbuss. I can't level up, you know, my saber or my cutlass or whatever you want to call it. I can't do any of that because everybody has the same exact weapons at their disposal. Your sniper is identical to my sniper. They are the same. And I'm not the biggest fan of this concept. I would really like to see maybe a progression system that maybe if I could use this gun over and over and over again, it maybe has a faster reload, or maybe that uh, the more I play and I use my sword, I can learn combos, block attack combos that do different things. I would really like to see something like that in the game. But to have no progression in terms of weaponry really does kind of turn off me personally. Now, scooting over to simplicity, a lot of the times, this game just felt like a taxi simulator. I would go from the place where you drop off the loot and collect gold to an island, dig up the island, shoot maybe two skeletons, which takes two shots, and then go back to the island and back and forth and back and forth. And though it is kind of fun to solve some of the riddles and adventure in some of this, it is very bland and boring. The only real action or challenge that comes from this is when you run into other players, other ships to fight. And that is obviously an exciting change of events, but that doesn't happen all the time. You could go 10, 20, 30 minutes without even seeing another ship. And then they may not even want to fight you. They may want to run, pussies. And that just may be something that happens. So even the battle mechanics, like when I go to fight these skeletons, they're just simple fights, simple battles. I don't have any crazy ways to try to beat these guys with mechanics. I'm limited to my ammo capacity. You're only allowed five rounds for each gun. And you can only resupply that ammo via finding an ammo crate. So I would basically get to an island, fight some skeletons, find the ammo crate, replenish it, run in circles, and do it all over and over again. It's not challenging. A three-year-old could do it. And one of their activities, which was like the Skull Island, which is basically the sky is illuminated by a giant skull with glowing eyes, and it lures you and everyone in the server to come together to fight over the great loot inside here. It was challenging to an extent, but this is also a rare event. It's not the main. It's not, it's not the bones, the abdomen the center of the experience, but when it does happen, they are fun and it lures people in. And there's lots of fights to be had. Now you can work alongside other pirate crews to try to do this and then fight over the loot at the end. You can do this a handful of different ways. Uh, I was able to solo one. So yeah, I said it was challenging, but I was able to solo it. I was able to just continuously run loops around the island and kill the skeletons. Eventually fought the pirate boss, got the key, opened it up, and I actually soloed one. And I feel like you shouldn't be able to solo one of these as a single person. Maybe a crew, but a person, uh, maybe a little too easy. You basically fought waves of things, summoned the boss, killed the boss, get the loot. And that's because I could just keep replenishing my ammo at these crates, picking up bananas, eating them, doing other things with them, and, and that's just it. You know, it's my personal life, don't judge. I do love the game. I do love playing with friends in this game. And I've even had some fun running by myself, and I've had some pretty gnarly experiences. The story-worthy experiences on the sea, and most of that comes from the actual fights with other players and other ships, and it's a really, really cool experience, and that's where I feel like most of the excitement comes from. Now, the progression in this game comes from the doing the runs. So there are factions, which you basically need to upgrade your ranks, and as you progress through these factions, you get harder challenges, harder missions, and that's where a lot of us are a little foggy on how this is going to be. Are we going to deal with stronger creatures? One of which is actually the Kraken. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is in the game, and it is always in every server, somewhere moving around, waiting for somebody, and then when you spring that trap, it really does. It comes from the water, it starts wrapping its tentacles around the ship, and you guys have seen the porn, you know what I'm talking about. It gets pretty crazy. And uh, it's rumored to actually require a couple different pirate ships to take on, but you know, me, naturally, I'm gonna solo it with a sword. That's it. I'm gonna get drunk while I do it. And it's cool. So there's, this is gonna be a very Easter egg heavy game, and you know, the creatures, I hopefully do evolve, and the challenges are evolve. And as you progress through these factions and do these missions, the challenges are supposed to get more difficult. And I really hope this is true. And then you build up this rep, and you have to get to this level where you create a status. That is the end game from what I have understood. You want to become an infamous pirate. You want to be just completely worthy of all. And 
as you do become one of these legendary pirates, you are uh, granted access to certain areas of the map where your regular pirates are not capable of getting some of these bounties. And then eventually it'll get to the point where you have a unique ship that when you actually spawn into the world, a big explosion goes off saying, hey, I'm here. Yeah, I'm the one you heard about. And that's going to be really cool. So I, I like that status is actually part of endgame. And, you know, you have a reputation to build up. And you do that by grinding and farming and stuff. But I don't want this game to just be strictly farming. I want there to be some real cool incentives for fighting. I'd really like there to be bounties on other ships. And I really don't have a lot of information to give you on what endgame is going to be like. I do want to encourage you guys to swing by a live stream. The first few days, we're going to be hammering this out pretty hard, and we're going to be grinding, building up the reputation for the factions, and hopefully within a week of launch, I can give you a full review of the game and really tell you guys that are a little hesitant about purchasing this title whether or not you should invest your hard-earned money into it. So those that want to actually just wait to see, swing by a live stream, or wait for that review to come out, subscribe if you haven't. So, honestly, I'd be lying if I said this game was not absolutely fun. Now, finding the right crew to go with, that could be hard as a solo player. You take friends in there, and you can have a lot of fun. A whole lot of fun. It can get boring fast, though, on some of the weak missions, because at that point, you're just an errand boy going back from island to island to island, and that's not very fun at all with no challenge in between. But hopefully, by the time you get up into those higher ranks, the activities become more challenging, and it really does keep you active and interested and engaged in the game. And if they miss that mark, that right there is pretty much the death of the game to me. As for how the game feels itself, it is actually a really fun game. I feel like an authentic pirate as I play the game. I mean, I have my sword, I can get drunk, we have a brig, we can lock people. When cannonballs hit the ship, you have to go down and repair the walls of the ship. If water starts building up and accumulating, you have to actually get your bucket out and toss the water over the edges. You have to control the sails, you have to move with the wind, you control their height, the angle. You have to have a person down below looking at the map, telling the actual captain of the ship, steering the thing, which way to go, how to navigate, lots of communication and actual teamwork is necessary to get across the ocean in the fastest way possible. If you're trying to outrun somebody to turn in loot, you're going to need to work together and the synergy needs to be on point because if you're not catching that wind, you're not doing it very well, they will catch your ass and they will steal all the loot that you have stored on your ship. So I'm really excited for this game, and I really hope they have some challenging activities, because if they have that, I'm going to play this game for months. I'm going to have a lot of fun with friends doing it, and it's going to have a really bright future. If they can't nail that end game, if they can't make the activities challenging, then, well, <laughs> it's dead in the water, guys. So thank you guys for watching. You, you know you love the fun. Don't hate it. I appreciate you guys. But this was Captain Neckbeard giving you guys a first impression review of my experiences with the beta with Sea of Thieves. I hope you enjoy a reminder to enter into that giveaway for the controller if you've made it this far. Appreciate you for your time. Thank you again. Subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you with another video soon.